Hello, it's um, James here. Um, I just wanted to make this video to talk a little bit about my custom-made Sir Modern guitar, which you're looking at right now. Um, I've had some people writing to me on my page or uh, other you know, ways and just wanted to know a little bit about it. So I'll, instead of writing back to everyone, I'll try and answer all those questions as best as I can here. Um, now, the kind of philosophy behind this guitar was I wanted to take the best things out of these two guitars that you see in the foreground here. Um, my Sir Standard, which um, wasn't custom made. I That was kind of more of a love at first sight when I saw it and I bought it from a store in New York. And uh, I love it to pieces, but it's a really, really strange, uh, kind of impractical guitar to use a lot of the time. Um, but it sounds absolutely amazing and I love it to pieces. The other one that you see next to it, which looks familiar, I'm sure, the shape to a lot of people, is the Antique Classic. And it's probably my favourite guitar that I've ever owned or ever will own. I just love it more than anything in the universe and just having it makes me happy. Um, it's such a beautiful guitar in every way. It's it's more of an, an artwork than anything. I just uh, I play it all the time. Don't don't even plug it in. I just play it because it sounds so good. It feels so good. But um, so yeah, when I kind of got the opportunity to build a custom made guitar, I knew straight away that I wanted a lot of uh, things from both of them as a starting point uh, to meet my other love, which is the Les Paul style guitar, because. Uh, I guess when I started playing six years ago, my first guitar was uh, like a Samick uh, Les Paul copy thing that I bought from a, um, a second-hand store in Bondi Beach here in Sydney. And um, I don't know, I, I guess that kind of rooted my love of that shape and type of guitar from then on in. So I wanted that to be, uh, or at least those ingredients, to be kind of the starting point for this which they are, so you essentially have a very similar kind of layout. You have a mahogany body on this guitar. Um, you can't see it because I wanted aesthetically this guitar to be black everywhere. So it does in fact have quite a thick, plain maple top, um, which you can kind of see, I guess, in the binding of the guitar which we left. But uh, it does have a maple top. Um, now, another thing that I really like about that style of guitar is the mahogany neck which feels really soft in the hands. Um, maple's great because it's uh, bright and, and tight and hard feeling and, and has all those kind of qualities which are great, but I love that soft, spongy, almost like you could feel your thumb sinking into it if you pushed it into it. Obviously that doesn't happen, but that's kind of how it feels. So uh, it does indeed have a very nice mahogany neck um, and it's completely finished uh, like a satin finish so it has the very slippery kind of feel I've never been a fan of that high gloss uh, vintage kind of thing because uh, I just kind of get stuck to it and uh, yeah it doesn't feel very nice so this is completely satin it feels like you're just touching a desk it's very nice um, the next shape was a tough one and I guess we went for like a happy medium uh, between these two guitars uh, both of those have giant necks on them Particularly, the, the standard has a baseball bat of a neck on it, um, and the, the classic has a little bit more of a comfortable feeling neck. It's still quite large, so I wanted to take it down a little bit, but still retain some of that meatiness. So it is an uh, elliptical neck. I'm pretty sure it's the uh, the GG neck, which feels absolutely mind-blowingly awesome. It has kind of a meaty feeling shoulder, but is very thin. Um, when you come up high, it tends to just balance out really nicely as well. It doesn't get kind of fatiguing. It makes it actually a little bit easier to play above the 12th fret with this kind of neck uh, shape. Um, uh, another thing that I took away from uh, the antique was the medium stainless steel frets, which I just think are the best feeling fret I've ever played by far. They're just, uh, they're not too big. I, I get a little bit on. I get a little bit scared when I touch uh, like modern metal guitars these days. They all seem to have the big, wide, uh, like gigantic frets, which in in my hands just feel weird. So um, these are just the perfect size. They're 
it's still kind of large, but not too large. And being stainless steel, they just have this very, very slippery quality about them, which I really like. Um, the bends are just, you kind of have to learn how to tone it down because they're so, there's no friction whatsoever, so you can easily overbend on them. But they have a very nice sound, like a bright resonance to them. You really get the attack of the string with single note. You can really hear the initial impact, which I really like about it, uh, with the stainless steel frets. Um, and apart from that, uh, aesthetically, I just wanted it to be very simple and uh, direct. This isn't a versatile guitar at all. I didn't want it to be. I didn't want to compromise anything um, because I wanted to use it primarily for the higher gain on um, more metal style of music that uh, I like, like to make from time to time. Um, so yeah, it's very straightforward in terms of its layout. It has a single volume knob, which you can see right here, three-way selector switch, um, the Goto 510 bridge, which I, I took from my standard. It's a very, very uh, reliable, solid bridge, which translates a lot of the tone straight into the guitar. And um, I mean that when you strum a chord, you can really feel the guitar shaking up against you. It really just all goes straight through it. Um, and it also has a recessed bridge because I like to use the bar up and down from time to time. And uh, so that makes that really easy. Um, it has the Sir locking tuners on it, which uh, this is the first time I've ever seen them. They work as well, if not better than my other guitars, which have the Spurzel machine heads. And the only difference is these are lighter. So the headstock feels a little bit nicer, which is a little bit lighter, which is nice. Um, it's got some little things about it which uh, personally I really like, as in <laughs> it's a you know souped up uh, metal guitar that has 50s inspired clay dots. So that's my uh, little hat tip to uh, vintage guitars that I really like the look of. Um, so yes, kind enough to do clay dots and I think they look really neat. You, you can't tell but up, up close they look really nice. Uh, has a rosewood fingerboard because I think it's a very nice medium. Uh, ebony, I thought about, but it's just too bright sounding, uh, particularly in the leads. It has a very pinchy, kind of nasally sound, which I don't like, so the rosewood is a happy medium. Uh, the pickups are the Sir Made Aldrich pickups. That's their kind of uh, high gain passive pickup, which I fell in love with when I got my standard because it has one in the bridge. Um, it's very round, it's very mid rich. Um, it's not scoopy at all, um, it's kind of unforgiving, but for leads it just it's just perfect for tight rhythms, it sounds amazing as well. Um, and in the neck position, this is the first guitar I've had with one in the neck, uh, it has that fluid, silky lead sound, which just sustains forever, which is really nice. Um, so that's pretty much it, apart from around the back, it has the uh, Tremel No device, which is pretty nifty. Uh, it basically, if you don't know what that is, it allows you just with a few turns of these little thumb screws here to turn your floating bridge into a like a fixed bridge, so you can dump the guitar into all kinds of strange tunings and um, and not have to reset up the the bridge. Like at the moment, I'm working on a track which is in uh, like a down tuning, and yeah, I've just closed this and put it down, changed the strings to a heavier gauge, and needed no adjustment to the bridge, but still have the functionality of a floating bridge. So I've been using this guitar on my record, which I've been working on all year and it's been really fun. And it's called Aphasia and is almost finished. So life permitting, I, I hope to have that out um, in the very near future and has some cool guest players playing on it, which I'm really thrilled about. Um, and it just sounds amazing uh, on record for high high gain kind of stuff as I'll demonstrate and uh, you'll be able to hear. So um, I'll play through a little bit of a song that I'm working on now, which is called Forgiving Myself. And yeah, I hope that answers uh, some of the questions that I've had. And I've also had people say that they want to order one just like it and what are the specs. So <laughs> that's totally awesome. Do it, go order one. Um, the specs will be up on my page pretty soon. I, I should have done that already, but I'm going to do it shortly. So 
uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this little bit of a song that I'm working on and uh, that answers the questions about the guitar, which is absolutely amazing and I'm just so in love with it and, you know, uh, I look forward to taking it into the future with me and everything that I do. So thank you to all the guys at Surf for making this happen and, uh, yeah, love it to pieces. Uh, hope you enjoy this song.